Good morning and welcome to University United Methodist Church. I'm Joe Meath, the pastor to this church. I didn't do that because of that. I did that because I feel like really I need to introduce myself after being gone for 12 weeks. So it's wonderful, wonderful to be back home. And I'll try not to cry. Um, it was good being away. We got to do some really fun things, some really crazy things. We'll tell you about driving in Ireland when you have a really long day to hear that story. But it was all really, really good. And I give thanks to this church for that time away that we were able to go. As it turned out, um, the first week that I was off, uh, I'd gotten a call that my cousin was very, very sick and I was able to go be at the hospital with him in his final days. And then just this two weekends ago, we were able to have his service. And so thank you, because that was part of healing for me also, to be able to be present for my family. So. I give you thanks for that. But we have millions of stories, and it's going to take a lot of years to tell them all. So just buckle up, people. Here we go. But this morning, we have a really busy morning. We have all saints that we are going to be recognizing, those that are tender in our hearts, those that have gone before us, those that we remember. We'll be having communion when Jesus called all to the table, remembering that we are part of a family larger than just the one we are born into. And we'll have time to celebrate and share the goodness of God's movement within our United Methodist Church denomination with the election of a new bishop. And we will have um, Bishop uh, David Wilson will be here. Is it January 1, Barb, that he will start with us? He comes to us from the Oklahoma Indian Conference as a member of the Choctaw Nation. We are so blessed that in all of that that took place, place uh, in Houston for the South Central Jurisdiction meeting, that that's how it came out. If you have not heard yet, um, D. Williamston was elected bishop also. It's a, good, it's a good, good, good thing for the church. D. will be going to serve in Louisiana. Um, there were a lot of hopes that she might come back and be with us uh, as Bishop Sines goes to uh, Texas now. But we are people that have so much to celebrate in our lives, in our world, and a place that we are called to be, the hands and feet of Jesus. So with that, we gather at this time to worship God. Thank you for being here.
invite you to stand as you are able as together we call ourselves, oops, sorry, turned it off instead of turned it on, as we call ourselves in by movement that we are going to enter into worship. It's a change not only of our hearts but of our bones and our muscles when we stand and we enter into this space together. Let us join our words saying, we come to you, God of the living, God of new beginnings, God of resurrection's glory. In you we find life and hope and joy. We come to worship you on this wonderful day. And we come to sing together hymn number 711 for all the saints. We'll be singing verses 1, 4, and 6. lighting candles and saying the names of those saints among us that are not with us as this day comes around once more. We invite you, using the, the small card that you were given, to write the names of the saints you would like remembered. When it is time for communion, you can bring them up and leave them in the vessels that are on either side. Choir, you'll be able to leave yours here, and yours should be down there in the corner. So will you have a, a time to think about those people that you would like to remember on this day. Will you pray with me? Ever-living God, this day revives in us memories of loved ones who are no more. What happiness we shared when they walked among us. What joy when loving and being loved, we lived our lives together. Their memory is a blessing forever. Months or years may have passed and still we feel near to them. Our hearts yearn for them. Though the bitter grief has softened, a duller pain abides. For the place where once they stood is now empty. The links of life are broken. But the links of love and longing cannot break. Their souls are bound up in ours forever. We see them now with the eye of memory, their faults forgiven, their virtues grown larger. So does goodness live and weakness fade from sight. We remember them with gratitude and bless their names. Their memory is a blessing forever. And we remember as well the members who but yesterday were part of our congregation and community. To all who cared for us and labored for all people, we pay tribute. May we prove worthy of carrying on the traditions of our faith 
for now the task is ours. Their souls are bound up in ours forever. We give you thanks for now they live and reign with you. As a great cloud of witness, they surround us with their blessings and offer you hymns of praise and thanksgiving. They are alive forevermore. Amen. And now I will call the names and we will light the candles and we will remember, remember those that have lost from our spaces, but not from the reign of God. And so we remember Jay McLeod. We remember Luella Long. We remember Bob Long. We remember Joyce Williams. We remember Terry Harpel. We remember Vivian Gamblin. We remember Bobby Walter. We remember Kurt Turflinger. We remember Mary Crawshaw. We remember David Depperschmidt. We remember Jim Pickle. We light a candle to remember the saints of this church that have gone before us. We light a candle to remember our saints of families, friends, mentors, and teachers. And we come in prayer. We bless your holy name, O God, for all your servants who have finished their course and now rest from their labors. Give us grace to follow the example of their steadfastness and faithfulness to your honor and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Can you hear me? Is this working? There we go. Good morning, guys. Come on down. Yay. Whoops. About to lose my topper here. Oh, my goodness gracious. Okay, got it? Let's just sit down right. I, yay, I'm glad you sat right next to me. Could I have you all come over here, please? Good morning. Now. They've already talked about it, so what is today? The pastor said it was some sort of special day today. What is today? What is today? It's All Saints Day. Do you have a, any clue what that is? Yeah, 
Oh, when you remember people, oh, you've been listening. I love it. I love it. Now, um, so, do you know, just a second, please. Thank you. So, now then, some would say that a saint is a holy person, like Jesus. Jesus is definitely holy. That God picked for a special purpose. Now, I have something on my head. What is it? It's an angel. It's also called another word. Starts with an H. Halo. Have you ever heard of the word halo? halo? Yes. Saints a lot of times are pictured with halos, and I'm going to show you one right here. And I'm going to put my little halo back there. Yes, folks, I can wear a halo. So, okay, just in case, I know some of you are giggling back there. Now then, I'm going to do this real quick, and I'm going to show you an old timey picture. Now, back in the day. They would show them with, as, with halos. Oh, did it go away? Well, I've got to be technical. And I just had it. There we go. Now let me turn it. Okay, now, keep my hands off the buttons. Can you see it now? Yeah. So what is around their heads? We just can't see halos. Can you see what's around their head? What color is around their head? Yellow. Yellow. Do you think maybe that's light? Yeah. They have light on their head. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yes. Now, there are many pictures of saints wearing a halo. Some of the old saints were John the Baptist, Peter, and Moses, to name a few. Now, how do you think they became saints? They well, it, you would think in order to do something like for the rest of us, there must be a checklist or a color chart. Do you guys have color charts? No. Oh, like red, yellow, green. Do you know what a color chart is? Oh, I'll bet you do have a color chart. I can only imagine. So, in order to be picked by God for a special task, there must be some rules. But no, not with God. In order to be a saint, you don't have to have a... There's no checklist. There's no color chart. Because another definition of saint is you just need to be a good person, kind and patient. Now then, so do you know what that means? We can all be saints, helping to bring the kingdom of God here. Now I can name some saints that were members of this church. Saint Mildred Scott, Saint Barbara Chafee, Saint Wayne Finley, dot, 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 the list goes on. Just to name a few, I remember these special people because they guided me in my faith journey when I first joined the church. And that's what being a saint means. Can you think of someone that makes you feel wanted and loved? Can you think of somebody? Oh, I love this right here. Can you think? Oh, yes. So long as you love someone and they love you back, you can be a saint. Today is a day of remembering those special saints who've died and gone to heaven and all the living saints here today. Okay, let's pray. Okay, can you bow your head? And put your hands together. Get ready for prayer. Oh, that looks perfect. Thank you. I'm still waiting on prayer hands. <gasps> I can see your prayer hands. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that with me. <coughs> Repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God thank you, thank you for, allowing for allowing us to remember saints, to remember saints who, have who have gone before us and recognize those saints that are here today, praising you. Amen. Together we will sing hymn number 545, The Church is One Foundation, verses 1, 3, and 5.
gotten back from a Curdy mission trip, uh, the three of us want to share very briefly, and I'll let whoever wants to go, oh, Jane wants to go first, I see. <laughs> yes, I volunteered, so. Um, you may have seen what I wrote in the newsletter this week, but we had a really great time and we worked really hard doing a lot of different things. I thought about um, you know, all the generosity that I saw while I was there at McCurdy, people being really gracious to each other and helping each other out. And um, just this morning, I happened to read in the McCurdy newsletter a um, write-up from Sarah Allen, who was one of the people in charge of the fiesta that we went to help with. And uh, she talked about the body of Christ and how all the parts of the body came together to work on this particular celebration of 110 years of ministry in the Espanola Valley. She uh, mentioned that uh, each person did their part, used their gifts and talent and time, and together they became a body that put together a joyful event Com uh, commemorating 110 years of mission in the Espanola Valley. And uh, as I remember all those who graced McCurdy since 1912, teaching and caring for all of the generation of students who have come through the McCurdy schools of northern New Mexico um, in various and in various communities they have served. Um, she just said, it, if it was not for their love of God, the commitment to children in this area, and this amazing legacy, the vision would not have been possible. And she winds it up by quoting, there are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. And that's 1 Corinthians 12, 6. Well, I don't have a whole lot to say except what I need to work on for next time I go, like how to weed a flower bed around cactus, <laughs> how to drive a stick shift, how to make cotton candy without it being one big ball, where to leave your sweatshirt when Glenn is mowing, <laughs> and that you make a lot of friends with other people that are there, you have, enjoy fellowship, and it, it was really a good time. Where not to leave your sweatshirt when Glenn will chew it up with the mower. We did have a wonderful time, and I am appreciative of these two for putting up with me. Uh, those are a few of the pictures. I didn't actually run the neat little machine, but I did drive it from one end of campus to the other. Uh, part of the time when I, of the week, I was involved with uh, McCurdy board meetings, so these two were on their own, but we had a group from Payson, Arizona who were there so they had plenty of company and like they said we did a lot of work. One thing is we all got new t-shirts and one of our people who would have been there didn't get to go because she was gone so this is for you dear. Oh, yay. Thank you. <laughs> and I will read what's on the back of it. It's a quote from John Wesley. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. Thank you again for affording us the privilege of going and serving. Thank you, team, for going and representing us in that. That's, that's more of that extension of this saint thing we're talking about, how people are touched and moved and have opportunities to go and do things because of the connectedness here. Our lives are connected with strength and hope to make the future better. It's always about a new creation that is coming to us. And this is the place that I would like to start with our scripture on this day. Reading from Luke 20, verses 27 through 38. Some Sadducees, those who say there is no resurrection, came into him, Jesus, and asked him a question. 
Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no children, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman and died childless, and then the second, and the third married her. And so in the same way, all seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will the woman be? For the seven had married her. Editorial comment. I think Jesus is shaking his head right now. Jesus says to them, Those who belong to this age marry and are given in marriage. But those who are considered worthy of a place in that age and in the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Indeed, they cannot die anymore because they are like angels and are children of God, being children of the resurrection. And the fact that the dead are raised, Moses himself showed in the story about the bush where he speaks to the Lord as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now he is God, not, now he is God, not of the dead, but of the living. For to him, all of them are alive. So what does this mean about resurrection and, and these kind of stories that pop up? Well, the Sadducees were, were trying to become very legalistic with Jesus. And they wanted a gotcha moment. You know, they wanted to get him in front of a crowd and embarrass him. And he was like, people, you just don't get it. This is a whole brand new thing that is being created. That there will be resurrection for all people, but they won't have to be married or um, who they were when they were here, but they are going to be standing in the light and the love of God for all time. Now that's really, really, really hard to even comprehend when all of your previous teaching has been these laws. And think how hard that would be for each one of us as a new thing comes to us. And we have to figure out what that means to us in our place in the world. Our place in our families, our place in community. This idea about new creation reminds me of this new world that's being created with us and around us right now. All sorts of things are happening that are giving us opportunities to step into light and love and possibility. There will be an election. How many here have already voted? Would you raise your hands? Oh my gosh, of course you have. Don't wait till the last minute, right? Get in there, get it done. Let your voice be heard. That's part of the new creation, being an active participant into the world. And also for us in the Great Plains Conference, a new thing is being created by having a new bishop. We'll stand in this place of trying to figure out what all of this means. In the time that the denomination has felt a shift, a long time coming sense of not walking in step with one another but a fracture that maybe in some ways we can almost think of as an earthquake where the plates of the earth were just moving against each other and finally something moves away. And so we stand as United Methodist in a whole new place of understanding this newness that Jesus speaks to. Um, Richard Rohr had written these words and he said, when did we decide, whoops, excuse me, let me get over here. Uh, it's, it's from the Apostles' Creed. And he says, all the apostles were disciples, but not all the disciples were apostles. They had been a hand-selected group that made the cut to go out, continuing the work of Jesus as he had an earthly ministry. 
We're standing in this place of newness that just is unfolding. I mean, maybe we don't even know what to call it right now, but it's something new that we've been called to with hope for all people. We have an opportunity to stand in some differences with our theology also. I'm going to read to you a part of uh, the children's book, The Next Place, because I think it speaks probably so clearly to a theology that Jesus was trying to explain to everyone that was there that, that day. That something new happens at the point that we all view an end, there is something new that goes on and goes forward. So Warren Hansen has written this. He was deeply involved with hospice, and I've read it before, but it just speaks so clearly to the new creation that Jesus is calling us all to. It's called The Next Place. The next place that I go will be as peaceful and familiar as a sleepy summer Sunday and a sweet, untroubled mind. And yet it won't be anything like any place I've ever been or seen or even dreamed of in the place I leave behind. There will be no room for darkness in that place of living light where an ever-dawning morning pushes back the dying night. The very air will fill with brilliance as the brightly shining sun and the moon and half a million stars are married into one. I will not be a boy or girl, a woman or a man. I'll simply be, just simply me, no worse or better than. My skin will not be dark or light. I will not be fat or tall. The body I once lived in won't be a part of me at all. I will finally be perfect. I will be without a flaw. I will never make one more mistake or break the smallest law. And the me that was impatient or was angry or unkind will simply be a memory, the one I left behind. I will travel empty-handed. There is not a single thing I have collected in my life that I would ever want to bring, except the love of those who loved us, and the warmth of those who cared, the happiness and memories, and the magic that we shared. Though I will know the joy of solitude, I'll never be alone. I'll be embraced by all the family and friends that I have ever known. Although I might not see their faces, all our hearts will beat as one, and the circle of our spirits will shine brighter than the sun. I will cherish all the friendship I was fortunate to find, all the love and all the laughter in the place I leave behind. All these things go with me. They will make my spirit glow, and the light will shine forever in the next place that I go. We don't know what that is like. But theologically, this feels very possible. To me, that whatever was our negatives, maybe that's been like uh, photoshopped out <laughs> of who we are. Maybe all those things that we wished we wouldn't have done, but we'd done, that memory goes away, and it's the purest love possible standing together in that space. Years ago, and I'm talking years ago, I took family and marriage and family class at Tabor College in Hillsborough. And one of the first statements that the professor made, he was a, a Mennonite pastor, and he said, uh, what do you think heaven will be like? People threw out ideas. And he said, will you be married? And people took various biblical conversation with that, and he said, will you know each other? Yes, maybe, hopefully, hopefully we will see in 
each other, that thing that connected us in life. Hopefully it will call us into a time of possible for the eons going forward, that it is all the love that could possibly be surrounding us, giving us hope, moving us forward into time. Probably some of you know the author Rob Bell. He's written several books and he eventually gets kicked out of his denomination because of his thought process that said that he could not believe in hell because what God of love would want people to suffer for all time. That he thinks when that time comes, there is a restoration in everything, in everyone. There is a hope for all. And I hope that too. Now we can only hope it. We, we don't know that for sure. I encourage you this week to think of the places that you might be the hands and feet of Jesus. We need help at the Lord's Diner on Tuesday night. Let's talk. We need help with helping with the uh, parking lot for the WSU ball games. Let's talk. Specifically, talk to Gloria about that one. We have times of being together, of sharing into this world, of making a difference right now by our actions. And then when the time that this earthly body is done, we go on into what is next. Next Sunday afternoon, we're going to have Ad Council meeting right after church because of a charge conference, which is the next week. We have to do some business. So it's just a heads up. That's another way that you can serve. I want you to think about all the ways that God comes to you and asks you to do something. The Spirit appears and asks you to be generous. People stand up and say, I need help, and you help. All of these pieces are part of the kingdom of God that we are called to. I hope you think about saints in a new way, that we can't put things in a box because it was simply easier for us. There could be a whole new creation that we're challenged with and that hopefully you start to see little bits of light coming towards you, encouraging you each and every day. We're going to go to communion now. After I drop my microphone over here. So communion in the United Methodist Church is open to all. You do not have to be a member here. You simply are asked that if you come that you think about sharing the table with others and what does that mean? Our communion is served with a gluten-free cracker, and then you're served by intinction, and it's handed to you, and you take it. If there's anyone that would prefer to have the self-serve communion from the little cup, if you'll raise your hand, uh, Gloria is, is able to, over here, was there anybody back here that needs that? Just a reminder that as you come forward for communion, if you will have your names, and you can put those, those that come this way, we'll put your things there. You that come this way, we'll put your things here. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. 
You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, and neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord. Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor and to proclaim release of the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made, us, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took up the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here today and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all of the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus gave to the disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. And so we ask you to come forward, bringing your cards when it's your time. We'll have the choir come through first. And Jane, if you will come forward, I will serve you. This is given with great love for you this day. If you can get the other one.
Gracious God, we thank you so much for the desire to come to the table, to be in community together, and that together we can make a difference in the world. Give us strength for the days and weeks ahead. All of this we ask in your son's name. Amen.
Will you join me in the prayer of dedication? It's not only about our financial giving, but it's about the spirit of giving, the ways we stand up and say, yes, I will do it, the way we vote, the way we smile, the, rec the reconciliation we offer into the world. All of these things are the gifts that we give thanks for. Let us say these words together. Gracious God, we bring before you our gifts in thanks and praise. We acknowledge all that you have done for us, all that you have given for us, all that you have made us to be. And so, we offer these tokens of money as a sign of our resolve, our commitment, and our hope that we might do your work in this time and in this place for your sake and the sake of all people. Amen. I made some announcements earlier in, in my note, but I'll, I'll mention those again. Gloria, Gloria, you want to just step in and wave? She's saying no. <laughs> this is who you need to talk to about getting signed up for doing the parking lot for the WSU basketball games. We'll keep it simple, right? There's Gloria, you sign up. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> The Lord's Diner is Tuesday night. We need helpers for that. I think we're only looking for four helpers, so step up and do that. Um, and uh, the ADCO meeting next Sunday right after church. And then the next week we have administrative, I mean, a charge conference that happens in um, East Heights United Methodist Church in our uh, uh, network group. Lucy. from today is the first Sunday in Advent. Just be prepared. <laughs> well, <laughs> I like that a little bit of suspense. Don't, don't say too much too early kind of thing. And so as we sing together, uh, gather us in, I will gather up all of our names that we have written and put them over with our candles. I invite you to stand as you are able and let us sing, Gather Us In.
been gathered, and now we're sent out to share the light and love of God with all that we meet. I invite you to share with me in these words of sending as we leave from the building to go out into the places of ministry that we each have opportunity to serve. Let us say together, may we who worship the God of the living go from here to embrace each moment as an opportunity to grasp eternity and to be fully alive in the now. We go in the confidence of today and the hope for tomorrow. We go with Christ. Amen. It's my birthday? Yes, it's my birthday.